Welcome to a new week of the show that doesn't just do things by numbers, it does them by letters as well. Now, let's greet our duo of doers, and first, the doyen of the digits, Lily Serna. Hi, Richard. Are you a bit of a, a stickler for detail, Lily? Well, I guess when it comes to my maths and uni work, I am a little bit. At least I'm not willing to admit, in case any of my lecturers <laughs> are watching. But as for the rest of my life, um, I guess I'm kind of a fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants kind of gal. Oh, dangerous, but eventually effective. Yeah, how about you? I do like to get the details right, but I have a problem with time management. So <laughs> usually by the time I get them right, it's a bit too late. <laughs> Welcome, Lily. And alphabet soup a man David Astle. <laughs> Hey, You're always well organised, though, aren't you? Uh, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were organised enough to uh, keep your ears open over the weekend. What did you hear? In fact, I was a co-organiser of my uh, niece's uh, birthday party, Nell, who was turning 10, and uh, lots of kids running around the park playing chasings, and I noticed the word they kept using when they stopped or when they were um, on sort of uh, in quarantine was pause. Well, like pressing the pause button. Exactly right. So, obviously, for this next generation, pause is a very important word and just comes straight from game playing um, and, uh, or, you know, sort of virtual reality. And by the same token, one of the phrases that uh, Nell also uses and many of her peers is the phrase, in real life. So, uh, if you're driving past a golf course, she will say, oh, look, they're playing golf in real life. This is a way, actually, where the language is developing to reflect a specific differentiation between the virtual reality of gameplay or, or social media online and actual face-to-face -face visual reality. For real. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have some of that tonight, David. <laughs> Welcome. Thank now, you. Now, let's meet the people playing letters and numbers tonight. And first up, back for her fourth night, management consultant Alana Rowe. Welcome back, Alana. Thank you, Richard. Now, management consultant now, but in a slightly past life, you were involved with criminology. What were you up to there? Um, I graduated with a criminology degree um, and chose to work in corrections. So I worked in a halfway house, um, rehabilitating men who'd served some time inside uh, prisons um, and helping them readjust with life skills, um, cooking, cleaning and basic necessities to get back in, into mainstream community. That would have been incredibly challenging, though. It wasn't certainly it? was. Not much difference to what I do now, actually. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but on a corporate level a, these days. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Welcome back, anyway. Great to see you again. Thank you. And ready to challenge Alana is Greg Mansell, an IT manager in the banking industry. Hello, Greg. Good evening, Richard. Now, you have a very interesting little bit of, a bit of background. I'd like you to look over the desk at this man over here. <laughs> now, do you recognise this man? I should, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I ask this, and you know why I ask, of course, is you went to school together. A long time ago, <laughs> primary school we're talking about, aren't yes, we, Greg? Yes, It was French's Forest Primary, and I think the school motto was sit down, be quiet and listen. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you did that a lot, Greg. I, I did presume. that, and I didn't notice other people around me, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Greg. So, please, a big welcome for our contestants, Alana Rowe and Greg Mansell. Let's do what we always do and begin the week with the letters game. You have 30 seconds to get the longest word possible, but if you are watching at home, then feel free to call out your answer as soon as you like. Alana, I think you know what to do now. I think I should. Hi, Lily. Hi, Alana. May I have a consonant, please? You may. Let's start with... R. And another consonant? T. And another? S. And a vowel, thank you. U. And another vowel? E. And another vowel? A. Uh, a consonant? D. Uh, like another one? C. And another one? And last letter, N. Thank you, Lily. First clock for the week.
First letter, Zalana, how many? I'm hoping a seven. OK, we hope so too. Greg? Six for me, Richard. Let's start there, please. Caused. And yours, Alana? Encrust. Mm, David, good start. No doubt. It's a lovely start. Well done, Alana. A good seven. Uh, put it in the pocket. And uh, I've started the week with a full Monty. Whoa! <laughs> that is the way to begin. So, what did you get? Well, I was looking at that word under, and I thought undercast might have been a word, but in fact, under axe to uh, the opposite of hamming it up, to sort of give less to the role than you should. Just a downplay, gently. <laughs> but you can't downplay a full Monty. No. Beautiful work, David. <laughs> But a very good start also for Alana on seven points. More letters, and uh, Greg, this is your first chance to choose. I'll start with a consonant, please. Sure. Let's start with K. And a vowel. O. And a consonant. M. And another consonant. N. And a vowel. E. And another vowel. I. And a consonant. C. And a vowel. O. And one last consonant. And lastly, L. 30 seconds. Your first choice, uh, Greg, how did you go? Very poorly, I got four. Four for you, Alana? A, a potential six. Potential six, OK, let's go with the four first. Milk. Milk, and yours, Alana? Nickel. Could you spell it? N-I-C-K-E-L. That sounds OK, David? It sounds perfectly fine, another good six, although it should be worth five, I suppose, <laughs> using the US currency. Uh, monocle is there, as a seven, and it comes from the Latin word monoculus, meaning one-eyed. Good stuff, David. Well done, Alana, though, six points. Time for some maths magic now as we head into our first numbers game for the week. One contestant chooses six numbers, then, of course, both use some or all of them to get as close as they can to the target number. And, Alana, have you developed a, a favourite combination yet? I have indeed. The, the safe family mix. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alana. It's too large and four small. And uh, first set of numbers of the week. Nine, three, seven, six, and the too large, 50. And 25, the target number is 969. Thanks, Lily. Let's head there. It was a big target for the first numbers, Alana, but uh, how close? One off. One off? Hopefully, 970. Well done. What about you, Greg? I got 969. You are spot on target. Well done. So uh, tell us how you got there, please. Uh, I added 7 and 3 and 9. 7 plus 3 plus 9 is 19. 19. Multiply that by 50. By the 50 gives you 950. And then you add 25 to give 975. 975. And subtract 6. Well done. Subtract the 6 is 969. <laughs> Lovely method, Greg. Right on the target. So, did you do it the same way, Lily? Uh, no, I did it a slightly different way and I'll talk you through it. Um, now, 6 plus 7 is 13. By 50 plus 25, which is 75, gives you 975. And we're six away. Um, nine minus three is six. Take that away is 969. Well done, Lily. Very nice method as well. And excellent work for Greg. Ten points. That means he's on the scoreboard with ten points. Alana on 13. We're heading for our first break and your first word mix for the week. It's crust hot. And the clue... Don't go the long way. Back in a short while. 